Hi everyone. We are going to start the talk of one beta and average. <coughs> cloud, cloud computing advocate is the title of uh, Open I see open stack in your future. Please begin. Thank you. Please be silent. Turn off your cell phones and uh, enjoy. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah. So welcome to, to this talk, um, which is uh, a kickoff talk, really, uh, for the OpenStack track that we have uh, organized inside the EuroPython conference. Uh, my name is Muharrem Havnyadovic. I work as a cloud advocate for Rackspace International. Uh, I'm based in Switzerland, in, in Zurich. So just to set expectations, this will not be a highly technical talk at all. Um, so the purpose of this talk is to basically place OpenStack as a project as an, uh, on your radar screen and sort of pique your interest and explain why it's an important project uh, overall, but why it's a very important project uh, in the Python space. After my talk, uh, there'll be a series of in-depth, more technical talk uh, held by various OpenStack contributors who know their stuff. Right, um, so this is the too long, did not read summary. So just in case your wife calls you on the mobile, you need to run out of, of this room. Uh, these are the three points I'd like you to take away. Okay, so point number one is cloud computing is the future of, 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 our, of our industry, of the IT sector. Okay, uh, point number two, uh, the future of the cloud has to be open, okay? So and when I say open, I mean free, open source, uh, with an, uh, open governance, and with, with, a, with, a, with an uh, appropriate license. Uh, I'm explaining this because uh, various people are trying sort of to claim this term open. So I'm, I'm sort of defining what I mean by that. And last but not least, the most important uh, point is OpenStack is the future of the open cloud. Okay, so. So, if you have been in the industry for a while, you, you, you suffered from a number of fashions, sort of, of, of fashion trends in IT. IT is sort of prone to these fashion trends. So, the first question I'd like to uh, cover is, like, is cloud computing uh, another one of these fashion trends? Or is it, is it, is it something real, something uh, that you need to pay attention to? And so my contention is that it, it actually is something very substantial and it's turning uh, IT industry upside down. So here's like an explanation why I think so. So what, what this graph shows is like how we, how we used to build data centers uh, or how we used to deploy systems, uh, you know, before and uh, with the cloud. So the blue, the blue stair here, blue stairs here, is how we used to deploy data centers. So you would, or a system, you would estimate capacity, and then you would deploy that capacity, and over time you just build out your capacity. Okay, and this is somewhat of a lose-lose proposition. Okay, which is sad. Okay, we don't want to be like in a lose-lose situation. Why is it lose-lose? Well, uh, during this phase, you have deployed more capacity than you needed. So you're losing money. This is called opportunity cost. You, okay? you sunk more money in your capacity in your data center than you needed to do in the first place. Okay. And over here, where the uh, actual demand exceeds your capacity, you're losing uh, customer. People are like angry at you and leaving, leaving your service. So, and what we want to have actually is this nice green curve, which is a bit of a holy grail of IT, elastic capacity, okay? So as the actual demand, which is the red curve, uh, varies and grows, goes up and down, you want this elastic capacity to follow it. So here you see like a spike uh, in, in load and the elastic capacity just uh, sort of goes up just to, to satisfy uh, uh, and sustain the load. And if your, load, if your actual load goes down because it's a weekend or for whatever reasons, uh, the, your elastic capacity goes down as well. So you can turn off a bunch of machines, which is good for your, for your bill, for energy, you know, for the environment, <coughs> overall. So this is one of the um, concrete, uh, like, 
This is one of the concrete benefits uh, of cloud computing, elasticity, okay? Some other uh, benefits are like infinite scale and, and elasticity. So if you don't operate your own cloud, you can go like, you know, something like Amazon, HP, or uh, to Rackspace. Basically, they give you a sort of infinite uh, capacity. So you say, okay, I want 100 machines, and you probably have them within a very short period of time. Okay. So whatever you need, you, know, you can just request and consume these resources. Pay as you go. So um, this is important as well. So if you are in the process of bootstarting some kind of business, or even if you're an established, established business, I mean, you don't necessarily enjoy the prospect of sinking a quarter million dollars in a data center. Okay. capital expenditure into operational expenditure, which makes your business more agile. Self-service, okay? So how many of you have, have gone to the IT department and asked for some kind of resource? Okay, was it a pleasant experience? <laughs> probably not. Uh, it, 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 wasn't probably, it wasn't pleasant for them either, probably. So what, what we want is self-service. You just, you know, you go to some kind of web console or use some kind of API and say, Inside my budget, inside my uh, in, inside some kind of limit that, that was drawn by, uh, by my boss, I can consume resources and I can just you know consume them whenever I want, whichever way I want. I don't need to talk to anybody. Minimal time to resource. Um, so again, this is important for business agility. This is not, not this is not like a technological driver, but if you need something done quick, okay, you have some kind of deadline or you know. Christmas is coming, you want to do some kind of marketing campaign, and you, know, you go to your IT department and say, hey, you know what, uh, for this Christmas we're doing like a campaign and we expect uh, like a thousand times more visitors to our website than usual. They'll probably kill you there and then, because you're the enemy. Like. But if you go to, you know, you can go to public cloud provider and get a thousand times more, uh, or a thousand servers or a thousand times whatever you need. Just consume it for a week or whatever, and then turn them down. Turn them off, shut them down, you know, pay your bill, and you're good to go. Uh, automation. So, uh, given all this flexibility, you know, uh, you know bringing servers up and down, uh, et cetera, et cetera, I mean, uh, or dealing with large uh, numbers of servers requires automation. Uh, so, like, human beings don't scale very well. So, if you want to sort of live in this new world and take advantage of all, all of these benefits, you need to learn how to automate things. So in essence, what, what, you, what we have here is a data center with an API, okay? So there's a data center, it's virtual, and it's, it is an API, you can hit the API and get anything you, can, uh, anything you need out of your new um, fancy data center. And so this is, this is pretty compelling. I mean, if, you, if, you've done, like, if you've done IT the old fashioned way and you have this possibility, no, it's pretty compelling. It translates into money, it, it translates into less expenses, you know, higher business agility, uh, just, just better business, okay? And for all these reasons, okay, um, it's, not a, it's not like a fashion, it's not one of, one of these IT fashions. I think this is here to stay. Okay, the future. So, I'm not a fortune teller, so I don't know what the future will be, but I'll give you some indications of what I think, uh, of, of where I think things are going, okay? So let me first uh, sort of uh, explain a little bit why, why um, I'm of the opinion that the uh, cloud has to be free and open, okay? So, for example, so, uh, the current market leader in the, in the cloud space is Amazon, okay? This, it's a nice cloud, okay? So, uh, they're, they're, doing, they're doing a lot of business, uh, doing very well, uh, they're, not, they're, not like a, they're not open. It's their own, it's their own technology, and you know, they're, still, they're still doing well. Well, I think going forward, it will have to be free and open because it, is, it will become a strategic resource. So, like, none of us can do work if you don't have power. Electricity is strategic. If you don't have power, you're basically hosed. Okay. The same goes for internet. If you like, if if I like, I, I switched internet from uh, telecoms providers uh, last week, and like I was without internet at home for two days. I was sort of, was, I was sort of crawling up the walls. <laughs> so so these are all strategic resources. Okay. And so imagine now that you had just one global provider for power on on on, on the planet, or for internet on the planet. So this is called a monopolistic market, and it's not a good uh, state of affairs. 
Okay? So what you want is, if, uh, for such a strategic resource, you want m more than one provider, many ideally. Also many niche providers who satisfy, you know, who, who try to differentiate themselves in some way and who sort of uh, cater towards what you need. Okay? So uh, this is important because you, you don't want to be like blackmailed by a single multiple provider. Okay? Uh, there's also like, uh, you know, all these things that came up in the last couple of weeks. Uh, like, you know, all these data being vacuumed and read by, by various uh, agencies, etc. So, it's a bit like Linux, okay? So, it has to be free and open because it, when push comes to shove, you want to look at the code, read it, and make sure there are no backdoors in there. Okay? It's just too important to be closed. Okay. Uh, it also needs to foster innovation and research. I mean, the cloud is still, cloud computing is still a young area, okay? So, I mean, we, we're, seeing, we're seeing quite a bit of uh, innovation and research in the, in the area. Like, so we're seeing like being containers pushed, hypervisors pushed, micro hypervisors, okay? And um, if you think like uh, of, of a research setting, whether, whether it be university or some kind of cool startup, okay? If it's open, if it's free, anybody can take it, use it, uh, you know, innovate on top of it, and feedback whatever they uh, uh, whatever they found out. Okay, and last but not least, uh, in order to build an ecosystem, uh, you need you need like an open platform. Okay, so this is the uh, so this is just a snapshot of the um, of the companies organizations that attended the last OpenStack Summit in Portland. Okay, and if you look at all these logos, it's a bit like it's a bit like the who's who of the IT industry, with some notable exceptions. Okay. So why are all these companies, all these organizations flocking to OpenStack to the platform? Why? Okay. Because it's a, it's, a, it's, a free, it's a free platform. It's a, it's a level playing field. Anybody can, uh, can basically enter and um, shape it the way they think it should be shaped and, and get benefit out of it. Again, it's, it's a bit similar like Linux. Okay? So if we, uh, if we observe that many companies sort of uh, compete with each, with, with each other, uh, collaborate in the Linux uh, ecosystem. Why? Because it makes sense. Okay. okay. Unsurprisingly, <laughs> this is the next slide. So, OpenStack is also sort of called the Linux of the cloud. Okay. So, this is a diagram that came out of IBM approximately two and a half months ago. So, two months ago, or so IBM came out and said, we will base all of our um, cloud products and services on OpenStack. And this is the kind of perspective they sort of brought to the table. I said, why are we doing this? Like, why are we uh, like, like betting on OpenStack? Well, to IBM, uh, OpenStack looks a lot like Linux. So they're observing, <laughs> bless you, they're observing a, a lot of similar, similar like, uh, trends uh, like, uh, like, like with Linux. So in 2000, I, I, I'm, I apologize, you, you can't really read this diagram, but uh, so, like in 2000, like, uh, IBM made, made a big bet on Linux. They, they like, uh, invested like a billion dollars or so in the Linux uh, space. And said, so, look, you know, we're doing this, uh, you know, we'll, base, we'll, uh, we'll base research, et cetera, on Linux. Okay. So what IBM is seeing is uh, very similar trends. Uh, so OpenStack sort of becoming a, the front runner in this open source space, but in a much more compressed time space. Okay. So here's like, uh, the people who founded the OpenStack project, like standing on the shoulders of giants, learning from the Linux uh, ecosystem, and basically uh, tur turbocharging uh, what they were doing in the OpenStack project. Okay, so you see, OpenStack will actually turn three uh, on July 19. So it's a very young project. I mean, only three years. I mean, that's nothing. Okay, and if you think, or if you think, uh, you know, uh, how far it made, it made it in, only in three years. It's amazing. Uh, okay. So what happened uh, like last year uh, is, or the year before last, is that Rackspace, who co-founded the project together with NASA, said, okay, so this is, we, we don't, this is not our toy exclusively. We don't want to keep our, uh, this to ourselves. We want to invite others to participate. So they established an OpenStack foundation. Okay? And they transferred all the intellectual property into the foundation. Okay? And from that point onward, uh, the, project, the project just exploded. This is where, where Red Hat entered the project, where HP and others entered the project and said, this is cool. I mean, so this foundation now levels the playing field for everybody 
and uh, basically it makes a lot of sense for us now to enter here and pursue this project and pursue the cloud market this way. Okay. Right, so here's a couple of, met of indicators of metrics. Uh, so when you, when you sort of look at open source projects, uh, the decisive most important metric is the health and the, the strength of the community. Okay. So you can, you can basically get anything done if you have enough good people you know, who, uh, who are willing to work on, on your project. So uh, what you see on the right hand side is a, is a metric that shows the, uh, the growth of the community in the open source cloud space. And the con so the, con the contenders are uh, OpenStack, so this blue hockey stick curve Hockey stick curves are what venture capitalists love to see. Basically, skyrocketing, taking off. So this blue uh, curve is the uh, growth of the OpenStack community. And you can see it's, it's taking off very, very strongly. Okay, and the other ones are the other uh, open source uh, cloud projects, uh, like uh, Open Nebula, I believe, is red. And then we have CloudStack here, and this should be Eucalyptus. And so you, you can see very, a very strong trend. Basically, OpenStack is winning and taking off in the, in the, in the open cloud uh, segment. Another thing I wanted to show you is the number of contributions and patches or, or changes landing across releases. Okay? So these are, these are the last three releases. OpenStack is released on a, uh, in six month cycles. So every half a year, there's a new release of, of OpenStack. And so you can see... Uh, I mean, that the number of comments is going up very, very steeply. Also, just, just, just the number of contributors, 517 contributors. Bear in mind, this is a Python project, okay? So I, I guess all of you come from, uh, you know, from software development. Now, I mean, I mean, imagine having like 500 developers, Python devs at your disposal. I mean, what kind of damage you could do with 500 uh, Python devs? I mean, okay. So this, this, this is like a massive force, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so who are these devs? I mean, are these like, uh, you know, hobbyists? Are these people who just sit down at 10 o'clock in the evening and, you know, hack for an hour because it's fun? Actually, actually they're not. Okay, so these are all like uh, full-time devs uh, that, are, that are basically uh, contributed to the companies who make up the OpenStack Foundation. So these are people who are paid, who, who work full-time on OpenStack. And again, like if you look at, at these companies, it's like it's a bit like who's the who's who of, of IT. Some very strong companies there. Okay, so why is this important? I mean, think about think about this. If you, uh, like I went to Portland to the last OpenStack summit, and I had people talking to me and said, "Look, oh yeah, like we were asking for this feature, or we were sort of thinking about this feature uh, uh, three months ago, and now it's there." Okay, so if you have enough good devs, enough strong people to to work on a project, I mean. It's basically just a matter of time until either a feature is added or a bug is pushed. So here's some more indications of momentum. Okay, uh, if if you like, a, if you have OpenStack skills to offer, so this red turbocharged hockey stick curve is the demand for you, for your skills. So this is the this is the job market asking for people who who have uh, OpenStack skills, you know, in some shape or form. So. You're, if, you, if you know OpenStack, if you've been experimenting with it and know how to use it and maybe uh, hacked on it, uh, this is a very, very marketable skill at this point. Okay. At the right hand side, we have a Google Trends, search trends. So the blue curve here is people like searching Google uh, for various aspects of OpenStack. Okay. It shows interest. Right? Yeah. Okay. Why is this important? I, so if you, when you start like, experimenting with OpenStack, you know, maybe uh, your organization and you want to have your own OpenStack cloud, you know, to, to set up test uh, dev environments or whatever, you want like, uh, you, you, want, you want other people who went through the same process before you ideally, you know, who, who wrote blog posts, who documented this process, so you're not on your own, so it's, it's easier for you to, uh, to, to, to do the same. Okay, so, what are, the, what are the pieces, what are the considered pieces of OpenStack? I mean, so uh, the, the crown jewels are, uh, are compute, are Nova, uh, codename Nova, 
and um, object storage codenamed Swift. So this is the equivalent of EC2 and this is the equivalent of, of S3. Then we have an image uh, service which allows you to upload various images. Uh, in order just to start a virtual instance, you, you need an image. Um, on this side, we have uh, a block storage like Cinder, uh, codename Cinder. This is the equivalent of Elastic Block Storage in, in Amazon's cloud. This is like the uh, software-defined networking piece. Uh, it used to be called Quantum. Uh, it's called um, Neutron these days. Allows you to uh, virtualize your networks. And uh, here, down here, we have a, we have an authentication service uh, called Keystone, and up here we have like a graphical uh, web user interface called Horizon. Okay, so you have like the sort of the basic uh, infrastructure as a service uh, computing pieces there. Having said that, this is not this is not everything. Um, uh, OpenStack is widely popular, and there's like a steady stream, or should I say, maelstrom. Of, of, of other components of, uh, uh, that people try to push into OpenStack. So OpenStack is sort of becoming a bit of a, of a black hole and you have like all kinds of, of projects on the fringe who are saying, hey, wait, you know, this is important. We want to have this in OpenStack as well and trying to push it into the core. So some of, some of these uh, more, no, more notable uh, components which are um, sort of on the outside or, or in the process of entering OpenStack core as we speak are heat which is like an orchestration service. Orchestration means um, the, cap the capability for you to describe what, what your system actually looks like. So if you want to deploy some kind of um, you know, three-tier application, you may break it down into a web tier, into application logic tier, maybe like a database tier. And so what uh, orchestration allows you to do is to describe the makeup, what the system looks like, what cloud resources you want, and how they are like wired up, how they relate to each other. And then you say, okay, take this spec now, take this, take this description of mine and materialize it in the cloud. Make it happen, you know, spin up all the resources, initialize them and, and wire them up. Okay. So he started as a um, re-implementation of um, cloud formation, of Amazon's cloud formation on OpenStack. And um, it is being integrated, so it, it is becoming part, part of the OpenStack core in, in, in the current development cycle. Silometer is uh, about metering and monitoring. So if you are um, like deploying your own cloud, let's say because you're a provider or if let's say you're a big company and uh, you, want, you need your own private cloud. So what Silometer allows you to, uh, to do is to, is to measure who is utilizing uh, how much resources in your cloud. So you can use this for chargeback inside an organization or you can use it to, to build your customers. And um, in this cycle, they're also um, uh, working on monitoring, on the monitoring piece. So very important in the cloud or generally, um, you want to monitor your applications and uh, make sure that everything is healthy and performing nicely. Marconi queuing a service, uh, I believe this is the equivalent of, uh, of the SQS service in Amazon. Okay, so cloud is very much about asynchron asynchronous uh, wiring up of, of components. So, you, you sort of, if, uh, it's, a, it's a good practice to, to, uh, to, uh, for components not to call each other uh, in, in, a, in synchronous fashion in the cloud, because something might fall down or you might need to scale up things. So you want ideally uh, like queues between components and then enqueue requests so, like Marconi hands is an important uh, new piece coming uh, to OpenStack. Database as a service, uh, newly renamed to Trov. This used to be uh, called Red Dwarf, and DNS as a, as a service used to be uh, called Moniker. Yes, and now designate. Thank you. So again, in summary, so why is this a cool project? I mean, it's free, it's free and open source. It has a very uh, a nice community, very welcoming community. Uh, I mean, this IRC channels, this mailing list. Uh, uh, you know, during the last summit in Portland, uh, like uh, uh, 2,400 people attended. That's a huge kind of gathering of people who are very, very uh, like excited and enthusiastic about OpenStack. Um, it's being developed at a fast pace. It's moving at a fast clip. Again, why is this? Uh, this is handy because you know if there are bugs, they'll be squashed quickly. If you need a new feature, um, you know 
you, you basically can assume it will be in place in four to six months. And uh, in light of this audience, it's, it's, it's all in Python. Okay? So, I, so if I, I mean, I think the OpenStack today is the biggest uh, open source Python project in existence. Okay. And also, uh, I mean, given the importance of the cloud and given the importance of the free cloud, I would also say it's one of the, it's one of the more important um, Python projects uh, that we have at this point. So what's in for you? Okay, so if you're a developer, I mean, this is, this is open source, it's a nice community to interact with, it's cool technology. So, you know, dig in, have a look at the code, find, find your spot, find your place. Okay, if you're just a, a user, uh, I mean, this is a good time now to jump on the wave. Learn, learn to use OpenStack. And speaking of learning of, uh, to use the OpenStack, we have a, uh, in the afternoon, we have a training session for developers. Uh, we will we'll go through the major components of OpenStack and basically just teach you how to use it. So learn it now, because in, in, you know, this, this, is, this, is, this is the big thing. Uh, and if you're an admin, again, uh, you know, it's only a matter of time until your boss comes to you and say, look, there's this OpenStack thing, it's free, and why don't we have it yet, you know? Get it deployed, we have this four spare servers lying around here, get it on this servers, you know, you know let, let's kick it. Let's make, let's make use of this. Okay, and last but not least, I mean, uh, there's, there's plenty of jobs. So there's this URL where you can go and, you know, get, get yourself a job, a very cool job. So here's a... Uh, I'm, here's like a forecast. I'm, I'm a bit wary of forecasts because they have to be fuzzy uh, by necessity. But th uh, this forecast was particularly audacious. So it, it, they say, okay, they see like 40 million new jobs in the cloud space by 2015. Okay. And, you know, to underpin this, there was this tweet here uh, by, uh, by Rackspace. So they saw like an 81% uh, growth in, in the job market in just six months. This is a very hot, hot area, okay. And I encourage you to get into it. I mean, whether you get, whether you want to uh, like work on OpenStack, get a job in one of the cloud companies, uh, you know, get into it and uh, play with it. Look at it. Okay. Last but not least, I want you sort of. I would like to close with a couple of warning signs. So, uh, cloud technology or cloud computing has, you know, is exhibiting these kind of, uh, of signs and symptoms. So it has become a, 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 an equalizer for many companies. I mean, have you, who, who didn't hear about Instagram being bought uh, for a, mil, a billion dollars by Facebook? Okay. Yeah. So Instagram is, they were just like a, you know, startup and they were bought for a billion bucks by Facebook. I mean, and these guys lived in the cloud. They live in public cloud, okay, and and so it's uh, the public cloud is a big equalizer. It allows small startups or small organizations to, to play, you know, in the big boys league. It's a disruptor. So I I was listening to Jim Zemlin, who is the chairman of the Lynx Foundation, recently, and he quoted uh, some study that, that said, for every dollar spent in the public cloud, okay, for, there, there'll be four dollars which are not which are not spent on data center infrastructure. Okay, so now the, the forecast for, for cloud, uh, for, for people spending uh, money in the public cloud go into the billions. Okay, so we're talking about four times that not being spent on data center technology. So this is a big disruption for all these companies. Okay. And uh, the cloud technology opens up some new possibilities. So things you can do now which you couldn't do in the past. Okay, and I'll mention, I'll show an example of this on the last slide. Anyway, Whenever you see these warning signs, okay, what you have in your hands is a revolution, okay. And what is the most important uh, thing to do or uh, doing a revolution? Well, to be on the winning side, okay. You don't want to be like trampled by the masses, <laughs> okay. So here's a couple of uh, sort of uh, uh, pieces of advice I, I would like to give you if you want to be on the winning side uh, during the cloud revolution. So the first thing, is, so the first advice is you need, to, you need to think in terms of scaling out and not up. So scaling up means uh, when you hit like a, a capacity limit, you just buy a bigger machine. Okay. And you do this you know, until it becomes too expensive or uh, until there are no bigger machines. Okay. Scaling out, <coughs> scaling out uh, is, is, is much more friendly to your budget. It is, you don't buy a bigger machine, you just buy more machines. Okay. So you need to learn how to scale out. 
uh, what that means, if you need a sort of scale out, it means you will eventually be deploying many, many machines. So gazillions of machines. You know. If you're a big system, it will be many, many machines. Okay, and again, uh, you know, uh, system, system administrators or DevOps guys, I mean, you know, this, these guys are gold dust. I mean, you don't want to deploy. Human beings don't scale. You don't, if you like, if you grow by a factor uh, of 100, you don't want to employ 100 more people. Otherwise, you know, all, all, your, all the benefit is gone. So you, but you want to sustain this growth by automation. Okay. So the other thing you need to sort of let go of are snowflakes. A snowflake is like a unique, it's a system that is unique in some way, sh shape, or form. You know, so you, you have this server here, and you have this administrator, you know, and he added things to the server, and this and that, okay, and then he left, went to another job, and but nobody, no, no, and everybody's afraid to, to, to touch that server because it's a snowflake, it's a unique configuration, and nobody knows uh, what this server is actually doing and, and how it's configured, okay. So you can't afford to have snowflakes anymore. So the other thing uh, you need to change is, Okay, you, you need to stop thinking of servers as pets. And a pet, you know, is, is sort of near and dear to our heart. When it gets sort of sick or broken, we nurse it back to health, etc. You, you need to think of servers as of cattle. Okay, oh, it's sick. Just, you know, kill it, slaughter it. You know, we have, we have plenty of these. <laughs> <laughs> Just spin up a new one, okay? <laughs> okay, so this is the, uh, this is the new phase of, of scale, okay? Cattle. Okay, also you need to learn how to leverage like industrial strength systems. Again, like, you know, you, you, if you want to scale, okay, you can't afford this. <laughs> okay, and you need to learn how to automate. So, you know, whatever tools you pick, whether it's Chef or Puppet or whatever, you know, they're all good, just pick one, okay, and use it. Right. Here's my, uh, here's my, here's my sort of pitch light. You know, pick up OpenStack, play with it, you know, it's, it's free, after all, you know, uh, just, just play with it, so, you know, sit down for an afternoon, you know, figure out how it works, it's good for you. Okay, so it's widely used, it's also very versatile, so basically you can deploy it on, you know, either on one machine, your laptop, or like 15,000 machines, what, what CERN is doing in Geneva, you know, they want to build a cloud with 15,000 servers. Okay, uh, but it's also versatile in terms of, uh, how you use it. So you can, you can either consume all of your cloud resources in, a, resources in a public cloud, or you can have your private cloud. You know? If for some reason you need, it needs to be private, it can be private. But you can also be hybrid. There's this new, new uh, kind of uh, adage uh, saying, own the base and rent the spike. So if you know your base load, okay, uh, have your own uh, private cloud, and all the, um, and for the spikes, which you, which you can't f foresee, you know, burst, into the, burst in, into the public cloud, which is the ideal combination. Okay, again, we have a cool community, and this, this, uh, this is moving very, very fast. Okay, so this is the crazy stuff that is possible today, which you couldn't do before the cloud. Okay, so I came across this like four weeks ago. So this is a, a German company called Aotera. <coughs> and so what they, they're in the business of, of, of selling heating systems. Heating systems, okay? Why, why heating systems? Why, why are they on the slide, okay? So they're competitive. Uh, they're the sort of, they do all the cool stuff, green energy, ecology, and they're not, like, they're, they're not, they're like price competitive. They're not more expensive than, than the other heating system uh, vendors, okay? The only slight difference being is how they generate the heat, okay? So this is not like a furnace here. They don't like uh, burn oil or coal or whatever. This is a rack of servers, <laughs> yes! And it's running OpenStack, of course. <laughs> okay, so very cool. And so the, so the other thing they did is, like, they didn't even bother with venture capitalists. This is so old school, or even banks. Oh, God, what are banks? Okay, so they went, they went to a crowdfunding platform, and there is like a million of euros okay, within, within months. Okay, so this is, a, this is the kind of, uh, you know, cool stuff you can do with cloud these days. Okay, that's all I had. Your questions now, please. Yes. Can we go back? Oh. <laughs> okay. uh, 
Can you go back to this uh, graph where you show where the, the commuters are coming from? Yes. I was oh, next one. Yeah. I was wondering this dip in, at the beginning of the year is that for them? <laughs> Might be. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> After the summit, everybody's hangover. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's drained for a week or so at least. <laughs> There's a question here. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, what are the isolation guarantees of the various components like compute or network? Say again, please. What are the isolation guarantees between <clears throat> the various components? So if I have a job, yes. how can I be sure that it doesn't uh, impact on other jobs? And if I have a mm -hmm. network traffic, how can I be sure mm -hmm. what kind of guarantee I have that doesn't impact on other network traffic? Okay, so um, there's, there's a couple of ways to think about this. Like if it, uh, in terms of uh, isolation, um, like... Uh, this is basically the, the busy neighbor problem. Like you, you don't want like a particular virtual instance to monopolize all the resources. Is that what you're asking? Okay. So we, we have like a we have a, uh, we have a scheduler inside OpenStack, and it, it schedules like uh, virtual instances. And uh, basically, this uh, this is this is how you would you, how you would approach this. But I'm sure I'm not aware of, 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 like, uh, of, any, of any hard limits imposed on virtual instances at this point. So you can have, you, you can have, uh, so when you start a virtual instance, it gets assigned uh, like a certain amount of RAM and a certain amount of virtual CPUs. Okay, and I believe if uh, if nobody's using, so let's say you, if you have like a physical server like with 16 CPUs, uh, uh, physical CPUs, uh, that might result like in, I don't know, in 64 or uh, virtual CPUs. And if your virtual machine is alone on that physical server, I believe it, will, it has sort of free reign. It can, it, can all, it can consume most of these resources. But if other virtual instances are spun up on the same physical server, then it will sort of be pushed back. And it will be sort of packed down and use, uh, use only the virtual CPUs it, uh, that, that are allocated to it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, if there are no other questions, thank you for coming. So that was uh, I see open stack in your future. I want to remember everyone that this evening there shall be the Google